Right. Now, stricter restrictions have been implemented in the Nelson Mandela Bay following the surge in new COVID-19 infections in the Eastern Cape. On Thursday, President Cyril Ramaphosa announced that only Nelson Mandela Bay would be subjected to tighter restrictions, which include an earlier uh, 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. curfew, curbs on the sale of alcohol. This will be from Monday to Thursday, as well as reduced numbers for gatherings. But for more on the story, I'm joined now by the Eastern Cape MEC for Finance, Economic Affairs and Tourism, Mr. Mlungisi Mvoko. MEC, a very good afternoon to you and I thank you for your time today. Now, Good afternoon to you. Thank you, sir. Now, in as much as the restrictions that were announced by the president uh, are limited to the Nelson Mandela Bay, which really COVID-19 has had an effect on uh, the entire province of the Eastern Cape. If, if you could just talk us through how the Eastern Cape has been affected um, economically as well as how tourism there has been affected by COVID-19. Uh, yes, it's correct uh, that COVID-19 has affected the province, uh, the whole province, not only in Nelson Mandela Bay. You would notice that uh, in the release of the figures, we have seen that Unemployment in the in the province remains high at about 48 percent, which was up from the second quarter of 36.9 percent. Uh, so this is how it is affected. But the tourism industry has been affected uh, hugely because um, in most of the lockdown levels, uh, the tourism industry was not operational. It's now that it has opened and. Uh, but you can see its effects in most establishments. Some could not even reopen. Uh, so it, it's a huge blow. But we have, uh, as a department, uh, t taken some decisions that would, to a larger extent, help the tourism industry. Uh, in fact, of all sectors, but specifically for today, I would say the tourism industry, in that we, we set aside some funds that would look at those that had applied in the National Department of Tourism Relief Scheme and qualified, but the funds went dry. So we set aside around 10 million that we gave to the tourism agency to, to, look, to look at those that qualified, but also to look at other tourism products that are under severe strain to assist them. But we also allocated funds for, for business continuity and compliance, which remember now that... Uh, 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 with compliance and business continuity, uh, any any tourism product has to comply with the sanitizing, the mask, and the and the social distance. And now that implies that in, in your establishment, from the door to your restaurant, you've got to have uh, to have those. Uh, so we've also assisted the, the agency with that. We, we we must say that also we're looking at a at a financial, uh, sorry, at a tourism intelligence uh, system that's also going to look at trends and uh, pick up some of the challenges that we have in tourism. So we funded them for that in preparing for a, a, a situation where there is no um, a COVID lockdown level, but also to be able to know what is happening where, equally to know who is it affected and how is it affected. So once that is up and running, all uh, tourism product owners will log into it and, and provide information, but also to be able to track a, a, a tourist. So, yes, uh, it's affected uh, all of us, but uh, we're saying to the Nelson Mandela Metro, there's nothing we can do about it. We have seen the rise in numbers in the Nelson Mandela and South Apartman, unfortunately, because they are neighboring districts. But uh, people must travel and do um, any traveling or touring in a very responsible way, keeping to the safety protocols. Now, you, you've just outlined some of the interventions that you are putting in place to help re, re, uh, rejuvenate the tourism sector, specifically during this time. Uh, what about other areas of the economy? Uh, because we do know that economic uh, transformation and resurgence and revitalization is key right now, specifically in preparation for the new year as well. Yes, we have uh, prepared, uh, prepared for the other industries as well. Uh, in our department, we have a portal where all distressed companies uh, log in, and once they log in, the, the department will then follow up to understand the challenges uh, that are there. Uh, in some, uh, we've, we used um, some incentives, for instance, if you 
uh, earning, if, if your total earnings as a, as a company, your turnover is around 20 million and, and above, we've, uh, we've uh, incentivized that, that each job that you keep, we've been able to give uh, the, uh, the 10,000 rand. And for any turnover that is less than 20 million, 20 million rand, we've incentivized by giving them, them a three month, um, some, some funding for three months uh, for, uh, as an incentive uh, to keep the, 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 the company rolling. So if you use such um, uh, um, uh, uh, effort to ensure that we keep, but we've also used the soft loans we're using ECTC, one of our entities that deals with uh, uh, um, the finance, to ensure that those who can afford can go for soft loans uh, within that. Uh, we have also used uh, some of our funding instruments, like we have uh, uh, the Estalo Youth Fund, we've used uh, LRED, which is the Youth Fund, the Stimulus Fund. We're using some of those uh, uh, funding instruments uh, to assist those that are hard hit by COVID. Because remember, if you talk about Estalo Youth Fund or the, the LRED, which is the Regional Economic Development Fund or Stimulus Fund, we're looking for people who have ideas uh, and then or who want to expand and then assist them. But now we're changing our finding instruments to say, let's look for all of those that have been affected usually by, by COVID and in, instead rechannel the funding to those. So we, we're using multiple uh, approaches in trying to address that. But the biggest challenge is, as, as of now is that uh, some of the uh, companies uh, are not really do not log into our portal by the time you hear, it's all over. But we're trying to extend a, a, you know, a hand to all, um, especially manufacturers, to understand their challenges so that we can assist them. The, the Eastern Cape still remains one of the poorest provinces in uh, South Africa. Uh, how are you within your Department of Economic uh, Development uh, working on reducing the poverty levels in the Eastern Cape? The, the, the reducing the what? Reducing the poverty levels in the Eastern Cape. Uh, look, th this is a a task that should be undertaken by the departments working together. Uh, it should not be tackled by one department. If you look, at, you would look at social development, for instance. They would have a number of projects, especially to the destitute. If you look at uh, human settlement, they would have uh, the, the same. In our Department of Economic Development, one of the things that we are promoting is that, all, firstly, all departments must buy local. Because if you buy local, you are assisting uh, in the creation of jobs. That, 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 that's important. The second one, we are, we are assisting in the small, medium, and uh, macro enterprises by financial and non-financial support so that whatever products that they have are, 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 can be certified and can be, you know, can be in the market in a very short space of time. So we're using that as well as a department. Thirdly, we have engaged in a, in a program of revitalizing the industrial parks uh, together with ICDC funding that we got from ICDC and the funding that we got from the province in revitalizing the industrial parks, but at the same time trying to lure some investors into those uh, in the industrial parks. So... It's a multi-pronged approach, but it can only work well when we, when we as departments collaborate. Uh, on the infrastructure, for instance, we're saying that it is time for us now to concentrate on infrastructure, whether it is the building of schools, the building of houses, the building of roads, uh, because if you concentrate on infrastructure, then there would be jobs. Uh, so um, the approach in dealing with reducing poverty is a multi-pronged approach, but it's an approach that is uh, um, for all departments. This is what, as a Department of Economic Development, we are preaching, that all departments must come together in dealing with this. And if you could talk us through perhaps some of the opportunities that exist within the ocean's economy. Um, you know, th there have been billions of rand that have been pumped into uh, that particular e economy and uh, really a radius sector that can help boost uh, development in the Eastern Cape. If you could talk us through that. Yes, uh, we've, we've launched our um, uh, Ocean's Economy was launched by the Premier Master Plan uh, sometime just before the, the lockdown. 
Uh, unfortunately, when when the lockdown came, there was stage five, everything might have come to a halt. But I must start by saying that there has been an offtake on that. For instance, if the Kocha Development Corporation will funded them with about 206 million, where they are going to, they are setting up an, an aquaculture, uh, which is fish farming within there. And this is the opportunity that, that uh, can can be uh, taken by any of those that are close to the to 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 the sea, because they, they, there is funding for for that. Secondly, we've also uh, you, we are also in partnership with uh, uh, or looking for partnership in, in in boat building because if you look at what is happening is that there's quite a number of uh, ships that come around and dock in some of our our harbors and they are in need of uh, you know refreshment refreshments and everything else and partnering with Kuha and by, we have seen that uh, they've got, for instance, one of their, one of their boats uh, that is taking, uh, uh, assisting the SMMs in supplying for those ships. So this is also part of, of, of the ocean's economy. So we, we, are, we are encouraging, now that uh, we are in level one, we're encouraging also the private uh, sector to come in and join us in ensuring that everyone plays in, 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 in the space of the ocean's economy. Yeah, it might be a bit difficult because most of them uh, would, would require a, a huge investment, but we believe that as a department we would we'll facilitate. And using the two uh, industrial zones, we are also, they are also assisting us hugely in facilitating uh, for the for the private sector, the SMMs to participate in the in the ocean's economy. And and, and what about township development, uh, MEC development with, within the the smaller areas and within the townships? With township development, uh, one of the things that was a challenge to us, even when we looked at it during during um, uh, the level four lockdown, where we could see that. Uh, there hasn't been much that was that has been done when it comes to township development in our, in, our, in our province, so to speak, except in your in your two metros. So we, as a department, are, are now engaging with municipalities because municipalities to come up with programs that would assist uh, us in township development. Uh, we, just a simple thing we've noticed that even when there was a a relief scheme for spaza shops. It was difficult for the people that are running spaces to benefit because most of them were not, were not, were not local. And we have look, looked at how our people have given over some of their, the shops that they were running and, and, and the, and, and the spaces that they were running. So we, we have now agreed that let us uh, partner with all municipalities and identify areas for, for township development so that... Uh, in the next financial year, when we're doing our budget, we budget, we, we, we set aside funding for particular pro projects that we'll uh, to identify. MEC, uh, thank you very much. We'll have to leave it at that uh, for this afternoon. But thank you so much um, for an umbrella view of uh, development, economic development and tourism within uh, the Eastern Cape. That's MEC Mvoko there.